What can you do with your Ethereum name service or .eth domain name? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Creator Economy Show. I spent the past few weeks learning all about ENS domain names and I've picked up a few of them. In a previous video on this channel, I walked through exactly how you can buy your first ENS domain name. Now in this video, I'm going to explain exactly what content creators and those working in the creator economy can use these domains for. And I'm also going to talk about some of the limitations. Hope you enjoyed the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this or about NFTs or Web 3.0, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. A .eth domain or an Ethereum name service domain is an alternative to traditional domain systems and it takes place on the blockchain. Now typically if you're accessing a website you don't need to know the web IP address for the site in question. That's the long series of numbers that will take you to the address. Instead you can use a traditional and hopefully memorable .com to go to the site in question. And similarly, if you're a content creator and you're starting your own site or your own blog, uh, you can just pick up a domain name on the likes of Namecheap or GoDaddy, and then you can hopefully build a platform over time that people will start visiting. So I've done this over the years. I've built Become a Writer Today, which is one of my sites. And then I also have my personal site, BrianCollins.com as well. And you can just use the .com version of this to visit these sites. With an ENS domain, you're basically skipping having to remember the complicated series of characters and numbers to use an Ethereum address, like what I'm pasting here in the address bar. Instead, you can simply use your ENS domain name to do all of the things that you do with a typical Ethereum-based address. The first use case for your ENS domain is to claim your Web 3.0 username. If you spend any time on Twitter or in Discord communities, you'll find that a lot of influencers and those who are actively involved in the space are using their ENS domain names either in their handle or in their bio. And this kind of signals to their followers that they're actively involved in the space and it demonstrates who they are. But not only that, if you go onto the ENS or Ethereum name servers app, you can actually change some of the settings and add additional records onto your domain. So I'm gonna go on here to uh, my ENS domain, brianjcollins.eat. And if I scroll down to text records, you can see I can add my Twitter handle, my website URL, and I can also link to my Telegram accounts, Discord channel, and so on if I want to. So it's a way of building up a type of online identity that others can inspect on the blockchain. And if I were to paste this address into uh, Etherscan, I can see all of these records as well. Not only that, but if you have an avatar, you can also associate your avatar with your ENS domain, and then it will appear on OpenSea. So I've gone over to OpenSea and you can see that Zeneca has associated his ENS domain with his OpenSea profile. And he's also associated an avatar with it and it's verified. So this is a great way of demonstrating proof about who you are or who you want to be and the NFTs you own and what your online persona looks like. That brings me to the second reason why you may want to use an ENS domain. So Zeneca has created a pseudonymous uh, profile online so we understand who he is but we don't actually know who the person behind Zeneca is so privacy is important to you because of your investments or because of what you're doing or saying online this is where ENS domain name can help and it can also help if you want to be judged online because of your content and what you have to say and not because of where you're from or because of your skin color or sex or background or other types of identities which people normally face prejudice for does this type of thing have a use case? Well, consider Reddit. Reddit has approximately 430 million users, many of whom are anonymous. We don't know who they are or what their real life identities are. But some of the top Redditors hold a lot of influence in the Reddit community. So an ENS domain is a way of taking this type of anonymous identity and using it throughout the web if this is something that you want to do. It's also a way of protecting your privacy if, for example, you've invested in the space or if you want to create a different persona to perhaps the persona you use for your work or your job or your family. The third way you can use your ENS domain is to look up all of the transactions that have taken place on it. So I've pasted my domain or ENS domain into the Etherscan Blockchain Explorer and I can see some of the transactions that have taken place on this particular ENS domain. But if you want to inspect the NFTs that are in a wallet, I'd actually recommend that you go over to rainbow.me and I'm going to paste in uh, Zeneca's uh, ENS domain so you can see what he's holding on his particular wallet. And if I paste this in, it'll just take a moment to load. And then you can see all of the NFTs that Zeneca has. So if you have purchased a few NFTs, you could buy an ENS domain and then you could use an app like rainbow.me, which is also available as an app for your mobile to view your NFTs and see what they look like on the go. So 
Now I've gone ahead and pasted in uh, my address for one of my wallets and I don't have too much in this wallet, but you can see here my ENS domain is here and also an NFT I purchased uh, some time ago in this particular wallet. So if you see somebody online and you're curious about what NFTs they have, use a service like rainbow.me to view their NFTs. And this may give you some information about what NFTs you could potentially pick up or which NFTs you could potentially find appealing. That brings me to the fourth way that you can use your ENS domain. It's basically a type of non-fungible token and you can manage, transfer and trade it in much the same way on OpenSea. And you can also view it using your NFT wallets in the same way too. So I'm over here on my OpenSea profile for brianjcollins.eat. And if I wanted to, I can sell this NFT or I can transfer it to another wallet, much like I could sell this particular NFT, which is your standard JPEG or transfer it to another wallet. Now, somebody spent some time building content websites over the years and I bought domain names and, and sold them on. There's a great secondary market out there for .coms that are worth quite a bit of money. It'll be interesting to see what will happen uh, with Ethereum name service domains and if there's, if there's the same type of secondary market. That said, when you buy an ENS domain, you don't own the copyright. Although nobody can take it off you, it'll be interesting to see what happens to some of these optimistic uh, domain name sellers. So one example here is Amazon.eat, which is listed on OpenSea. But one that stood out to me is Nike.eat. This particular seller is hoping to sell it for an astonishing 999 each, which is approximately three and a half million dollars. I'm not convinced there's going to be the same secondary market for ENS domains, at least not yet. The fifth way you can use your ENS domain is one you'll probably get the most use from if you're invested a lot in cryptocurrency and if you transfer funds between different wallets. So once you've set up your ENS domain name, you can add your Ethereum address, your Bitcoin address, Litecoin and Doge. Then you can use your ENS address, that's brianjcollins.each, to send and receive cryptocurrency, rather than relying on this string of characters and numbers, which you can easily mix up. In other words, I can go into MetaMask and I can type in, send money to brianjcollins.each. And then it'll automatically come up and it'll have my address here as well. So this is a great way of managing your wallets. And it's also a good way if you want to tip your favorite content creator online, because if they're using a .eat address, that's the address that they have that you can send funds to and which they'll receive. Now I would say to be careful if you're gonna do this using exchanges and so on, because not all exchanges have full support for this and not all wallets do either. So it's probably something you just want to do with your MetaMask wallet for now, or at least double check so you don't lose your funds. The sixth way you can use your ENS domain is to potentially build a Web 3.0 publication or platform. There's a few options out there like Steamit and BitClout, but Mirror is the most advanced in this regard and it's probably the one that I think is the easiest to use, at least right now, and to combine it with your ENS domain. So I've associated brianjcollins.eat with my Mirror profile and it's easy to do. You just set up your Mirror profile, connect it to your MetaMask wallet, verify your Twitter handle and then add your ENS domain name record. Then what happens is when you publish entries on mirror.xyz, it automatically adds your Ethereum name service address to it. So this is a great way of building a Web 3.0 publication online. And you can even start earning money as a writer through Web 3.0 and through the blockchain by launching NFTs and by creating your own token. Now that said, there's some huge caveats with building a Web 3.0 publication and blogging using your ENS domain. The biggest caveat is that a .eat or ENS domain does not index properly in Google search results, at least at the time of recording this video. So I've typed in site brianjcollins.com, which is a traditional domain name into Google. So you can see all of the index content. And it has here some of my older articles that I've written. But if I were to type in an ENS domain, it's not going to recognize any content on the site. In other words, you shouldn't expect a huge amount of organic search traffic if you're going to build a solely Web 3.0 publication. Instead, you still need the .com domain, but perhaps you could pick up the ENS domain and associate it with your .com instead. It's also worth pointing out that the ENS domains don't always resolve correctly in Google search results. So even though I have associated my domain name or my ENS domain with my traditional domain, it still doesn't navigate correctly to the site. Uh, I understand there is some workaround where you can type in HTTPS and then you can put in your ENS domain uh, and then it should take you to the website, but I couldn't get this working for some reason. The seventh way you can use your ENS domain is to complement your .com property. So if you're going to build something online, I'd still recommend that you go over to Namecheap or GoDaddy or your register of choice and finding the .com or if the .com is not available, you could potentially look for a .xyz if it's going to be in Web 3.0 
You could also look for our .io, but basically buy in a domain name in the traditional way and pay the five or $10 per year that you're going to pay. I'd also then recommend that you go over to the ENS website or my Etherweb wallet and look for the equivalent there as well. Then you can go over to the dashboard of your ENS domain name server. Then go into the dashboard of your Ethereum name service and associate a website with the particular property. That way you're future proofed for Web 3.0 and for whatever you might like to build in the future. And because this is on the blockchain and is decentralized, nobody can take it off you. Now there is a big caveat to this. So a domain name typically costs five to $10 per year to buy. And although ENS domains are marketed as being cheaper, you still have to pay the cost of gas. So when I bought this particular domain, it cost me $90 in gas to buy it. So you may want to consider purchasing it for a few years if you want to avoid gas fees or wait till when gas costs have come down. The eighth and final way you can use your ENS domain is simply to prepare for the future. ENS domains are the most popular blockchain standard, at least at the time of recording this video. Although other alternatives exist, uh, for example, on Tezos, and you can buy a .crypto and .bitcoin and so on, this is by far the most popular. Not only that, but when you buy a ENS domain, it can't be taken or canceled. So it's a way of building a platform in the future and ensuring it's one that you can own. That said, uh, as great as the prospects or the thoughts of decentralized websites are, it struck me that Ethereum is just one blockchain. There are other alternatives like Tezos and Solana and so on. So it'll be interesting to see if they become more popular or widely accepted in the coming years. Uh, I'd also like to see it become easier to uh, buy an ENS domain for casual domain name buyers. So it's relatively easy to get a blog up and running these days and lots of services make it easy for you. But right now you still got a buy cryptocurrency, set up a MetaMask wallet, load your MetaMask wallet with Ethereum, and then figure out how all of it works. There's quite a few steps to buying and using an ENS domain. And although there's a way to link it to your .com, it's one that I had a few technical issues with, uh, and there's some documentation here that, I, that I'm going to follow and hopefully get it linked to my site, and I'll let you know when that happens. Now, I hope you enjoyed the content in this video about the eight potential use cases for ENS domains. If you did, let me know in the comments section below. If you want to get more videos like this about Web 3.0 or NFTs, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And finally, if you did like this video, I think you'll like this one next.